and I love what God is doing at Hope City. And uh, this week is week number four of Beyond the Blessing. How many of you guys have enjoyed the first three weeks of Beyond the Blessing? A smattering of clapter. How many of you guys have enjoyed the first three weeks of... It's better, it's better. Uh, if you have missed any of the weeks, uh, you can go to our Hope City YouTube page, our YouTube channel. You can go back and check it out. I believe it will encourage and help you for week number four of Beyond the Blessing. If you're taking down notes, which we always encourage you to, this is your very first time with us. We are a church that continues to grow. We're shapeable and moldable. Look at the person next to you and say, never stop growing. And then look at your second choice and say, I need an eyeliner, something that I can take down notes. But if you're taking down notes, this weekend's title of week number four of Beyond the Blessing is Blessing Blockers. Let's go. Let's go. Give God praise. Come on, Dikembe Mutombo. Not in my house. Have you guys ever felt like something like blocked your way or blocked your blessing? Maybe a situation, a person, something got in the way of what you felt like. Maybe, man, I, I kind of deserve this. So I, I, I'm, I'm just a humble brag, uh, but I, I like to think that I walk in uh, supernatural favor, uh, the fog, some would call it. The favor of God. Hey, Amen. So whenever I go to a restaurant parking lot, I expect to get a good parking spot. How many guys are those people? Like, I, I've had people literally leaving restaurants saying, you want my spot? And they're like running to the spot so that I can have their spot. Like, I have parking lot favor. Uh, but have you ever pulled in and like you've got the perfect spot and that one guy, probably me, uh, pulls in and takes that spot at, and they're like, you, you totally stole my spot. You blocked my blocks my blessing. Or maybe you are trying to do what's right and you're walking into a restaurant and some sweet uh, old, older person is trying to walk in and you're like, uh, let me hold the door for you. And you don't realize that six foot in distancing, she's actually traveling nine deep like the Wu-Tang Clan and has a whole group. And they end up taking the last table. So when you step up and say table for four, they're like, oh, that's fun. 30 minute wait. You're like, what? Got blocked. And this one's a little bit more personal. When Brecken, our oldest, was born, New Year's Eve of 2008, such an amazing moment, my first of four incredible kids. And uh, the next day, my wife and I are sitting in the hospital room, just, just so blessed by our, our first baby boy. And we don't know how any of this works. We don't know what kind of celebratory moments other than free jello and grape juice and little weird cups that you can't peel the top off of. You know what I'm talking about? But they walk in our room with balloons. It was amazing. This huge thing of balloons. There's a check from Huggies for $3,500 for diapers? I said, okay. And then a $5,000 scholarship donated from a, a trust in that area to, to, for, for future college. And I'm like blown away. My wife's like, what's happening? I'm like, this is unbelievable. And then I noticed the check was not our names. It was somebody else. Uh, so, <laughs> and then this person walks in really quick with a clipboard and says, this is the wrong room. I'm sorry, guys. Let's go. And I'm like, do we get anything? They're like, yeah, whatever you're, whatever you're snacking on there. You can have that. And just hit the button. You can have more. So he was born the last baby of 2008, but the little girl next to us was the first baby born in 2009. So she got all of the extras. But I felt like we kind of got blocked a little bit. Have you guys ever had that happen before? Like you feel like something or a situation has blocked your blessing. Today we're going to be talking about blessing blockers. Last weekend, we talked about the life of Jabez. In First Chronicles chapter 4, he prayed this audacious prayer, and we talked about three takeaways, that we have to live a surrendered life like Jabez. We have to pray audacious prayers like Jabez, and ultimately, we have to position ourselves to steward for future seasons. Jabez prayed this bold, audacious prayer, also referred to all throughout the Bible in devotional moments as the prayer of Jabez, and the truth is, it says at the last part of this, this verse that God granted his request. We learn how he was a man of character and honor. One of the takeaways I hope you grabbed last week, and if you didn't, go back and listen, but I want you to hear it again today, is do you possess the character to carry what God wants to bless you with? Because Jabez did, which is why God granted his request we also learned last week, and we're going to continue to talk about it today, that character paves the way for blessing. The truth is, 
You can't stop God's blessing, but you can block it. That's where free will gets in the way. You have the ability to get in the way, to not live open-handed, to mess some stuff up. I know that's a little harsh. Some of y'all are like, it's coming in hot. Like, I get it. No, but the truth is you can't stop God's blessing, but you can block it. And today we're going to identify some blessing blockers that we need to be aware of. The Bible is full of great men and women of God who have lived with character beyond what was the norm in that time. And today we even find ourselves in a culture that's not much different, where upright and strong character can almost seem to be a rarity now. Almost living, I said this last week, but almost living with one foot, dabbling on the line of how far can I go to not mess things up with God. Because in our humanity, a lot of times, we wanna just kinda dance on the line of integrity, dance on the line of character. And God is saying, hey, I've got more for you. This is not about legalism. This is about holiness. It's not about legalism. It's not about rules, rituals, and all of that. It's about relationship with a God that says, hey, the closer I get to your heart, the more I don't want to do that anymore. Thank you for your overwhelming enthusiasm. I'm preaching better than you're responding. No, the closer I get to your heart, the more I don't want to cling to the things that almost destroyed me. I've got generational struggles in my family. Addiction is a big one. Everything addictive we've been a part of from slot machines to shooting up to beating people up to drinking too much. Addictive issues run deep in the lineage of my family. And that saying that there are things that run in your family, God didn't realize that when the presence of God ran into my dad, it would be broken off of not only him, but my brother, my sister, me, my son, my daughter, my daughter, my son. That generational struggle did not have to last. But it did take a person like my dad saying, I want to surrender to the heart of God. Today, we're going to be looking at how to unlock the full blessing of God in our lives and help identify what is in our life that might ultimately be blocking what God wants to do. Here at Hope City, we believe and we're building on men and women of strong character and we're connected to a God who wants to empower us to become who God wants us to become. That's why we want you to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. Now, let me say this as a disclaimer. A lot of times in uh, Americanized Christianity, when you say the words like blessing, you're like, this guy's going to talk about money. So he's going to talk about. He's going to talk about money. We're actually not even talking about money at all. There's so much more to the beauty of the blessing of God. We sing songs. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. If you actually go through number six, 24 through 26, the blessing, the benediction, the Bible theologians say are the greatest blessing in the Bible. If you actually go through that, it's so much more than just resources. There's protection in that. There's favor in that. There's hope in that. There's peace in that. There's wisdom in that. Everything that God wants to do is tied into his blessing. The Bible says in James 1.17 that all good gifts from, come from God. Today, we're going to continue to lean in and talk more about this. You know, as teachers and preachers and students of the Bible, we love to focus on points all throughout the Bible and stories of Joseph and Joshua and different men and women in the Bible and how God brought them from the prison to the palace. Man, you can put that on merch. You can put that on an Instagram quote and get some likes. But the truth is, I believe there's a third point to these stories that even though they were in a prison, I wondered in that place that felt like the lowest place for them, they also looked around and thought, man, yet if God will deliver us, we're also in a land of opportunity. Here's some Bible foundation for you. Egypt at the time when Joseph was sold into slavery would today be considered a global superpower. When Daniel was brought as a captive to Babylon, he was brought to a city where the Bible says Nebuchadnezzar's reach overshadowed the earth. I believe that both Daniel and Joseph, being wise men full of perspective, looked beyond the prison walls, the parameters of that captivity, and saw that the city they were in might possibly be where God was going to promote them, where God was going to show up and fight for them. But it's really easy to have a half glass sort of approach to life. It's really easy to wake up and be like, what's today? What's today? Monday? Ugh. Another case of the Mondays. (laughs) I know that they're not talking about the Rona anymore, but Cheryl's sneezing over here. She probably has something that I'm going to catch. Like, it's really easy to have a pessimistic, Debbie Downer sort of approach. 
But when you start looking at it through the lens of the way God looks at it, it changes things. So if you're taking down notes, the first blessing blocker that we have to watch out for, this is us as humanity. The first one that we need to watch out for is a lack of perspective. A lack of perspective. Personally, when I have an off day, I don't mean a day off, I mean an off day. How many of y'all have had some off days where you wake up on the wrong side of the bed? Traffic is way more annoying than normal. You're texting people, you're putting it on your Instagram story, like I'm in a parking lot right now on West Park Tollway. Traffic hasn't moved in 60 seconds. <laughs> but seriously, everything's bugging you. Gas prices are bugging, everything's bugging you. And the truth is, when you have a lack of perspective, it's very difficult to see what God is doing. Y'all realize you've already survived 100% of your worst days? Like you woke up again today and you're breathing, which is proof that God's not done with you yet. Like you woke up today, we're in a room where people showed up early to set it up for you with air conditioning, praise God. Like we have to change our perspective so that we can see all that God is trying to unlock in us. I've chosen to fix my eyes on a different perspective. I've decided to look at the incredible church, the incredible city that we're all called to. The strong men, men and women of God who surround this amazing church and surround Jackie and I personally, when I look at all of that, I can start seeing through the lens and the perspective that God has at all the incredible things he's actually doing. It's very easy to miss it. It's very easy to miss because of lack of perspective, all that God has done and all that he's promising and faithful to complete. Isaiah 43, 19 says it this way, for I'm about to do something new. Man, I love it. See, it's already begun. But then the question is asked, do you not see it? If you have a lack of perspective, you won't see it. Yeah, I know. I know I got a promotion six months ago, but you know that Kathy got another one. How come I didn't get one? No, no. If your lack of perspective is skewed, you'll live your life like this instead of actually stepping into the glorious light of Christ. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness and I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. If you lack perspective. You won't see all that God has been doing. And again, all that he says he'll do. Cause here's the truth. You can clap. That's okay. I'll take it all the way in the back. I'll take it. I'll take that one in the back. Cause here's the truth. God has already prepared the way he's just preparing you. That's a, That's a good perspective. He's already prepared the way. Proverbs 16, nine says in their hearts, that's us humans determine their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. He's already prepared the way. Sometimes he's just waiting on you to change your perspective so that he can prepare you. Yeah. Proverbs 29, 18 says, without vision, the people will perish. Philippians chapter three talks about Paul's perspective. And when you're reading about Paul's journey, which we did in Acts 27 a few weeks ago, from the prison to the dungeon, to the shipwreck moment, to the island of Malta, man, he was going through it. He could have just quit, but this is what happens in Philippians 3, verse 13 and 14, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Paul had a perspective that says, I'm not going this way anymore. There's a reason why your windshield is bigger than your rear view mirror. You're not going this way anymore. We have to stay focused on where we're going. Look at the person next to you and say, change your perspective. Come on, say it. Change your perspective. Joseph could have stopped. Daniel could have stopped. I wasn't talking in third person there. Daniel in the Bible. Daniel. Daniel could have stopped. If you have perspective, you will choose to press on. Because my perspective and your perspective goes beyond you. My perspective is inherited by my kids. A healthy perspective is inherited by the staff that God has entrusted us to lead. Lack of perspective, though, impacts everything and everyone around you. Because when you look at things in the natural, you'll see pain. But when you look at things through the spiritual lens, you'll see potential. And potential and purpose actually run parallel. So Jackie and I have this chair. Uh, it's actually the same color as Jackie's hair. It's just like bold sunrise orange, it's awesome. And uh, a friend of mine was throwing it out. And I said, whoa, 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 why are you throwing that chair out? He goes, ah, oh, man, my wife hates it. It doesn't go with anything. And I was like, man, we, we love it. Like, we love that chair. And you know the saying, one man's uh, trash is another man's treasure. For my Spanish-speaking family, one man's basura is another man's bendición. (laughs) 
I try. I do. I try. <laughs> when we saw this chair, though, we saw, watch this, the value in it. We knew that we could build through different textures and color and change. We could do some things in different seasons. And that chair has gone through all these seasons. We got it while our babies were baby babies. And we have literally chosen to design entire areas. When you walk into the foyer of our house, it's right there. It's going to be passed down. Jackie and I had to clear space to place. And the truth is, when the blessing appears in your life, your character will dictate whether there's room for it. Because with any blessing, you have to have the perspective to see it, the space to place it, and the wisdom ultimately to steward it. So we saw the value in this. I know it's a simple chair, but we saw the value in something, and we had to clear some space to receive it. Are you clearing space to receive what God wants to download in your life? Have you made room for what God wants to do through your life? Because if you're consumed by all these other things, if your life is bogged down by all this other toxicity, you'll never actually walk in the fullness that God has for you. You can, you can live your best life. You can. You can truly live out of the overflow of what God wants to do through you. I said this last week that there's 1.5 billion square feet of rentable storage space in America. And there's thousands of people, millions actually, that have storage rental, and most of them can't identify what's actually in there. So I made the joke last week that if someone wanted to give us a living room set, my storage unit is climate controlled. It's awesome, and I've got enough room to put it in there, but that thing is so packed full of a bunch of stuff, I don't even know what, that I don't actually have room to receive it. Someone DM'd me and said they wanted to actually bless us with a living room set. I said, I wasn't asking. I was, that was a, just part of the illustration. It's okay, though. But we have to make room. Um, so I, uh, I, I, all of us have been blessed with certain gifts and certain skill sets. And uh, I discovered that uh, God had anointed me to uh, play the arcade game Hot Shot. And so I have the ability to almost like a robot just make shot after shot. It's, it's, really, uh, it's really incredible. If you search very hard, you might be able to find it on YouTube. Uh, but we're in Florida at this place, and uh, this really has nothing to do with my sermon. I'm just talking right now. Um, and I'm at this place, and, and uh, uh, we're, we're at, at this, this spot, and we're shooting hoops, and these, this, this group of like four or five uh, 14-year-olds, they're kind of bullying me a little bit. And this kid's like, bro, your shot's not that good. And I was like, yeah, it is. And he was like, no, no, that's not that great. And I was like, whose score is this? And he goes, that's my boy Cody. 114 is the record. He's held it for one year. And I was like, today, Cody's going to lose his spot. And I'll stand here. I had to make room. I had to make room for God to annoy me. And so I'm standing there. I'm standing there. And I, mean, I was getting close. I mean, like 80, 85, 90. Uh, others were like 40, 45. And I, I got into the zone. And I blacked out. It was like robot form. I was just making shot after shot. And they're starting to like, they're starting to heckle me. Uh, the, the Cody's friend, when I was closing in on 114, tried to block me. I was like, hey, bro. Bro, oh, take it easy. So the crowd starts gathering. They're chanting what I thought was my name. And it was more like, how, like why is he still here? When is he going to leave? And so... <laughs> Uh, but I, I hung out there anywhere between 20 minutes and 90 minutes. I locked in. And guys, I'm telling you, something shifted in me. And as of two weeks ago, well, how do you know? Because I called and asked them. <laughs> the score of 138 with DG Woo! is still on the board. <laughs> I had to make room and be a good steward of what God had entrusted me with. <laughs> I wasn't going to let Cody and his little gang trying to block the blessing. That had nothing to do with the sermon, but there you go. All right, number two. Here's another blessing blocker uh, is a lack of faith. That's heavy. So the first one is a lack of perspective. The second one is a lack of faith. When we look at a man like Abraham, we see that he inhabited blessing, that he was blessed and was noted, I love this, as a man of great faith. Genesis 15 Five, six records it. It says, then the Lord took Abram. This is before God changed his name to Abraham outside and said to him, look up to the sky and count the stars if you can. I love this. That's how many descendants you will have. And Abra Abram or Abraham believed the Lord and the Lord counted him as, as righteous. Why? Because of his faith. Abraham could have had a lack of perspective and faith ultimately blocked the blessing God was trying to provide. I've said this multiple times. I need you to catch it. Some things can be taught. Other things are caught. One of my fathers in the faith told me this when I was 16 or 17. He said, God is not a forcer, Daniel. He'll never force himself on your life. 
Because of free will, you can get in the way. But what he is, is he's a filler. If you'll make room, he'll fill every time. You need peace, he'll make room. If you need joy, make room. If you need wisdom, make room. Whatever you need, Abraham made room. Hebrews eleven six 6 says it this way, and it is impossible to please God, watch, without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists, and he rewards those who sincerely seek him. You might have a perspective that if you don't have faith in God, so you're looking at this, I have this perspective that if, I, if, I, if I'm walking in this, but I'm trying to do it in my own strength, faith and trust actually run parallel so that we can ultimately walk out the fullness of what God is trying to bless us with. But here's, here's the truth. Uh, you have to start, I started adapting this, uh, adopting this as of the last really two years, but this whole last year, I started doubting my doubts. We gotta get to the point where we doubt our doubts. So when the devil says, hey, you're not gonna make it, I doubt that. Just so you know, I doubt that. Just so you know, you're going to be broke as a joke like your family. Oh, I doubt that. Because God has given me power to get wealth. And he said in Philippians 4, 19, he'd supply all my needs. And you back up just a few verses, devil, in verse 13 of Philippians 4, it says that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We have to start doubting our doubts. You're going to die from this. I doubt that. You're going to walk in this issue or this diagnosis the rest of your life. I know who the great physician is. I doubt that. We have to get to a point where we start doubting our doubts. Look at the person next to you and say, I doubt that. Come on. The devil is trying to make you believe something contrary to what God is saying about you. If it's not from God, don't receive it. Don't believe it. Don't let it take root. The enemy wants to try to, with his schemes and his tricks, plant these seeds that one day you'll live out of the harvest of these bad seeds that were planted. Don't give him that foothold. Don't give him that access. We have to start doubting our doubts. David records in Psalms 37, 25, he said, once I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen, I love this, the godly abandoned or their children begging for bread. So when the enemy says, you're not going to make it, uh, my God has never abandoned me. He's never left my mom. He never ran out on my family. He didn't run out of us on us when she had to have emergency surgery to save her life. My God has showed up. It might have been in the 11th hour, but he showed up. It might have been inside of the fiery furnace, not on the outside, but he still showed up. We have to get to a point where we don't have a lack of perspective or a lack of faith. I want to walk in the, I want to walk in faith daily that God will provide every need of ours, my family, my future, because his nature, I want you to hear this. God's nature is to provide. I love the acronym of the word faith. If you're taking down notes, write this down. The acronym of the word faith is fully anticipating it to happen, fully anticipating it to happen. Abraham had a moment where he could have doubted that what God said would come true, but he trusted God even when he couldn't track him. Because God isn't asking us to have it figured out. He's asking us to trust him that he has it figured out. He's not asking, he's not, he's not asking us to have it figured out. He's asking us to trust that he ultimately has it figured out. Nowhere in the Bible does it say freak out, have anxiety, have panic attacks, and be completely consumed in worry every day of your life. It doesn't it actually says the opposite. The truth is a pessimistic attitude will rob you of your peace. A pessimistic attitude will rob you of your purpose. But when you look through the lens of optimism, you'll always see opportunities. You'll always see opportunity. You'll see God opportunities. So number three, as we're writing down blessing blockers, the third one is a lack of connection. First one was perspective. Second one was faith. This one is a lack of connection. We have to stay connected to God. We have to stay in the word. We have to stay connected to his heart. Got to stay connected to the local church. Got to stay connected to each other. John 15, five says, I'm the vine. That's him. You're the branches. This is a foundational verse here at Hope City. If you, that's a choice. If you remain in me and I in you, what happens? You'll bear much fruit. But apart from me it says that you can do nothing. The early church in Acts 2, they were unified and their connectedness found provision and more than enough. It said no one lacked. I was talking to a friend of ours on staff and he was reading this report out of Japan that said they're moving towards a model where the average family size is one. That restaurants are starting to move towards accommodating average table reservations of one. 
that in a hyper-developed and interconnected culture, there is personal and spiritual disconnects like we've never seen before. Because here's the truth, though. We were made for community. Say it out loud. I was made for community. And God himself created us to be in community and relationship with him. And it can take a long time to grasp this throughout the journey of life. Oftentimes, blessing comes through the connectedness of relationships. God wants to do a work through a church. He does it through people. Just like if the enemy wants to take a run at somebody, he does it through people. What if God wants to get something from you? No, no, no. That's the lie. He doesn't want to get something from you. He wants to, he wants to get something to you ultimately so that you can be some, a conduit to pass through you. He's not trying to get something from you. That's the lie. That's the misconception. He's trying to get something to you so that he can pass it through you. What if God is aligning you and setting you up to be blessed, to be a blessing? What if God wants to set you up to be blessed by someone else? I talked to you guys about this the last couple of weeks that there was a TED talk by an atheist. And he said that, uh, and he referenced other, other, other religions, but he said the one common denominator in loneliness, the one thing that combats depression, insecurity, people feeling all alone on an island on their own, the one thing that combats it is simply serving. He said, find a friend, go to a local shelter or mission and serve and make a friend because servanthood is a great equalizer. There's a story, maybe you've been around a long time and you're an OG and you'll remember this story, maybe you're new, uh, but there was a story out of a church, uh, a friend of mine's church where there was a businessman in the church who, who really gravitated towards this family and, and they, they had a minivan that was barely running and the dad was uh, having a tough time finding work because he had lost his job and in that rural area where they were, it was really difficult to find work and they had three kids and, but man, they were faithful. They showed up to church every Sunday. They sat on the front row, they worshiped, but the guy, the business guy could start he started noticing they were getting weary. They were starting to leak joy. So he walked up to him and said, hey, I made you something. The guy's like, cool. And he handed him a CD, a sticky label on it, that said, listen to this. And some of y'all are like, what's the CD? Amen. Uh, <laughs> now we would hand him a QR code and say, scan this and go, go listen to this. Hands him a CD and the guy's like, what's this? He's like, man, I just put a bunch of Christian music on there and some sermon teaching and there's a little special message at the, at the end. I want you to go listen to it. He said, I appreciate it. But internally, it was like, I don't want a Casting Crowns album. I don't need Toby Mac. Like, I don't need to listen to this. Like, what is So he got in the car and just kind of dismissed it, just kind of threw it in the little cubby area on his minivan. And weeks went by. The businessman walked back up to him on a Sunday and said, hey, did you listen to the CD? And he goes, no, no. You know what? I'm, I'll do it today. I'm so sorry. What was there? Like, is it your mixtape? Like, it's like, is it you singing? Like, what is he? He goes, no, man, but I want you to listen to it. He said, I need you to listen to it today. He said, okay, yeah, yes, sir. Goes back out, can't find it. They're three kids and use it as a Frisbee, a coaster. They couldn't find it. He's digging through the van. Weeks and weeks and weeks went by. The businessman walked back up to him again and said, hey, man, did you listen to the CD? He said, no. He said, okay. Well, man, if you ever find it, I want you to listen to it. Months and months and months went by. The businessman ended up transitioning. His company sold. They were moving out of that region Nine months or so later, the guy's cleaning out the minivan, digging through all the old fries and cheeseburger wrappers. He finds that CD that says, listen to this. He puts it in. It's all this music and it's all these sermons. And at the very end, it's the guy who gave it to him, the businessman's voice. And he said, this guy's voice calls him by name. Hey, as soon as you stop playing, as soon as this ends, I want you to call me. Here's my number. I've been watching you, and I felt compelled by God, but you had to take a step. So I hope that you listened to this, and obviously you did, because when you call me, I have a job. I've got benefits for you. I'm going to buy you a brand new minivan. I'm going to take care of your family, because I see you just like God sees you. Well, man, he's blowing up the guy's phone now, nine months later, trying to get a hold of him. Well, the truth is the season had passed because of his humanity he ended up blocking the blessing. What if in your connectedness, what if God is trying to get something to you and through you for someone else? What if someone is supposed to get in the way of your storm and God wants your connectedness to them for God to bless you through their life? I don't know. But number three was a lack of connection. Number four, as we bring this in for a landing, the next blessing blocker is a lack of peace. That's a big one, lack of peace. Peace is a massive deal right now, more than ever. 
we wrestle with peace. Rest is an issue right now between inflation, Ukraine, Russia, all the stuff that's happening around us. What's going to happen here? What's going to happen in the Middle East? What's going to happen? What's happening in our city? The truth is peace. We have to fight for every day. Matthew 6, 34 literally tells us not to give place to worry and to not be consumed by what tomorrow brings because it has enough worries of its own. Matthew 6, 25 through 27 says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink about your body. Some of you, that's your, literally, that's your, your verse. You're like, that's why I don't work out right here. This is the verse. I have this hanging on my mirror in my fridge. What will you wear? It's not like, it says life is more than food and more than, the, than your body, than the clothes you wear. Look at the birds in the air. Do they not sow or reap or store away in barns? Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than them? Can any one of you, I love this. Can any one of you by worrying at a single hour to your life? A lot of times we block blessings in our life because of a lack of peace. A lot of times it's self Induced, We struggle because we're allowing this to consume us. We're allowing social media and the comparison trap to consume us. They seem way happier. He seems way funnier. She's way prettier. You allow these, these moments to consume you to the point where it robs you of your peace. Jesus was asleep. I love this story. On the boat in Matthew chapter 8. And Jesus was fast asleep because he was living with vision beyond the storm. Matthew 8, 23 through 27 says he got, he, it says they got in the boat. He got in the boat and the disciples followed him and suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves began to sweep over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. Verse 25 says the disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. Jesus is so cool. 26. He says, you a little faith. Why are you so afraid? He got up, rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. Verse 27. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? that even the winds and the waves obey him. So often we live our lives wrestling with having peace and no peace, and we start this trajectory of sleepless nights and pointless fights and frustrated family moments, and then this pattern begins to form of bad decisions. And I said this, and I'm going to continue to say it. Anything that's costing you your peace is too expensive. That might be a relationship. That might be a situation, toxic thinking. But anything that's costing you your peace it's too expensive. Your peace is worth more than you realize. And when you walk in peace and you walk with the peace of God in your life, you'll start seeing all the blessings around you. But if you're walking without peace, you start making permanent decisions in temporary seasons. You'll start making permanent decisions and blowing with whatever the wind blows with. And you'll start listening to outside toxic voices trying to convince you that you're not blessed. Y'all look at the person next to you and say, you're blessed more than you know. If you actually look at the statistics of here in America, what we actually have, even the least of us, is still at the highest rate of percentage of the wealthiest people in the world. And we have people all over the world that watch that would say amen. Lack of faith, though, keeps us blinded to the blessings that God wants to give us. And this is the last one. The last blessing blocker that we're going to look at today is a lack of, this is key, a lack of transparency. When it comes to blessing blockers, we often think that the enemy is launching this full outward attack against us. But the truth is, oftentimes the devil will plant seeds and weeds in your life that unchecked will cause you to self-sabotage. How many of you guys have ever known anybody that self-sabotaged? You're like, why are you making these decisions? And a lot of times we allow those seeds to become weeds and they begin to grow and outgrow the good fruit in our lives. We start making decisions that are self-sabotaging. David prayed a prayer that I think is pretty polarizing, something that we can actually apply to our own life. In Psalms 139, verse 23 and 24, it says, search me, watch this, thoroughly. Ugh, that's dangerous. This is a dangerous prayer. Search me thoroughly. That's open-handed, oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there is any wicked or hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. David knew that God could paint a beautiful picture on a blank canvas. But here's the truth. God won't bless who you pretend to be. He can't bless who you pretend to be. That is a blessing blocker if you're not the authentic you. He doesn't need another Daniel Groves. He needs you. He doesn't need another Jackie Groves. He needs you. He doesn't need another Sam. He needs you. What has God entrusted you with? What is God unlocking and wanting to unlock in you? But the truth is, 
if you're putting on all these filters and facades, somebody the other day said, Pastor Dan, can I take a picture with you? Is it cool if I take a picture? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're home. This is our home. This is your home and my home. So we don't need to take pictures every week at our home, right? So if I'm out in the lobby, let's just high five. We'll, we'll come up with a secret handshake, but we don't need to take pictures. She's like, cool, 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 cool. So she pulls out her phone and y'all, she put a picture, a filter. I had blue eyes. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Blue eyes and like freckles and stuff. I say, hey, what's this? She goes, oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't looking at you. This is the filter I like. And I'm like, it doesn't even look like you. <laughs> She's probably in the room. I love you. Let's take more pictures. Hey, amen. <laughs> God wants to unlock blessing in the authentic you. It's going to step on some toes, but I'm not afraid to do it. I'll get you to laugh for a minute. I'll step on your toes. Uh, <laughs> I want to be careful with this. Netflix this week. Uh, announced that there are over 30 million people that are bumming off of uh, other people's passwords. And uh, see you later, guys. Amen. <laughs> no, no, that, that they said that there is an epidemic of people. Now, listen, before you DM me and say, but I got a profile of Dora the Explorer on my mom's account. I get it. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about everybody else that's bumming on everybody else's accounts. Like, you're the person that you're like, I don't understand my... My mom's ex-fiance, Spotify, isn't playing anymore because he changed his password. Come on, somebody. Like, and maybe that steps on your toes. You're like, but Pastor Daniel, I've been a good steward. I bought a Tesla. I saved my money, but I don't want to buy the whole charging station. My neighbor's townhouse is so close, I can just plug into their power. Come on. Here's a free subscription. Let me help somebody. Uh, free subscription. It's called the version. You can read the Bible. And then, you can grow in integrity and character. Now, none of you are doing that. We're talking about everybody else. No, no, but think about it. No, no, y'all do the you version. Nobody's bumming on Netflix. None of you. None of us, right? It's two staff. They were like, okay, noted. And they're like, adjusted. They're like, I'll cancel my friends. No, but Netflix, when they said this, they were like, man, there's so many, watch this. There's so many people not living integrous. How can God bless the authentic you if you're not trusting that he can provide what you need to pay for your own Hulu and Disney Plus and Netflix and y'all, I'm getting off this subject. Some of y'all are like this. I'm, I'm offended and convicted. Amen. Let's stick with the convicted. Let me give you a verse so you don't think it's my opinion. Luke 16, 10. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. I believe that God wants us to live in the black and the white, not the gray. My mom used to always tell me, hey, stop eating the grapes. I was like, I'm sampling them. She's like, nine is not a sample. <laughs> this isn't Costco. <laughs> Here's where it all kind of opened up for me about the transparent life. I'm raising four kids. I want to pass down. Now, listen, this is not perfection. Some of y'all are literally like, I know, I know, I get it. Well, I read the version. I get that subscription. It's free. I get it. But I was at a restaurant the other day with my kids, and they had this really, like, awesome setup with this, like, peach soda and some stuff. And there was these water cups right next to the water jug, right next to the peach soda. So my 11-year-old was like, hey, she's right here on the front row. She said, hey, can I get the peach soda? And I said, daddy didn't buy that. I didn't pay for that. And she's like, okay. What's these cups for? <laughs> and I was like, the water cups. And she was like... <laughs> and my son says... Well, who's telling them they can't do it? And I said, it's called an honor system. They're trusting that people aren't taking the water cups and just bumming free pop. And I told my kids, we're not going to sow bad seeds today that we live in the harvest of tomorrow. So we're not going to steal even in the little because we need God to trust us with so much more. I'm sorry. I don't know. That might have stepped on somebody's toes. I don't know. But I'm trying to instill that type of integrity in them. I'm totally going to land this plane. I need to. I need to. I need to land this plane. Will you stand to your feet? The thing is, the enemy is real. And he will dupe us into blocking our own blessings because we get in the way. But there is an enemy who wants to block the blessings in your life. <laughs> if, you, if you were in service last week, I talked about Big Cheese and how Big Cheese showed up and he fought the bully or he didn't fight the bully. He stood up for this kid who was being bullied by these five other kids. And Big Cheese, man, protected him from elementary to junior high to high school. And I talked about how we have a big God who is fighting for us in battles that we don't even know about. And the enemy tries to come in and block your blessings. But we have a big God that is blocking the enemy. We just have to be in a posture of surrender. All blessing, all blessing comes from one person. His name is Jesus.
The foundation, the reason we do all of this is because of Jesus. The rock of our salvation is built on Jesus. I was at H-E-B a few weeks ago. And uh, it's so funny. I'll tell a verse and nobody will say anything. I said H-E-B and somebody said, woo. <laughs> I heard it. I'll say Psalms 139. They're like, I'll say H-E-B and she said, woo. <laughs> I agree. It's delicious. The rotisserie chicken salad is unbelievable. So I'm over there getting some rotisserie chicken salad. And there's this sweet, sweet lady. And I, I'm really bad with ages. She was really, really sweet. She was moving in slow motion. She was anywhere between the ages of 80 and 130. Like she was sweet. And she was there with her daughter. And I heard her say, I want one of those rotisserie chickens over there. So I look over. There's only one. And her daughter said, well, there's a bunch. She said, no, I want that organic one. I'm my meat and healthy. That's the story. That's why she's aging so gracefully. She said, I eat, I eat right. So she said, I want, that roti I want that rotisserie, the organic one. So the daughter says, I'll make my way over there. So I see him doing it. I'm like, oh, praise God. And I walk over there, and there's these guys in their mid to late 20s. And I hear the guy say, I mean, this is 10 seconds. Hey, get over there and grab that rotisserie chicken. There's only one of those, the good, like antibiotic-free ones. Go, go, go over there before that old lady gets it. I hear him say it. I hear him say it. So I have, I have a decision to make. I'm big cheese in this moment. I have a decision to make. I can run over there and grab the chicken myself and be like, hey, hey, and hand it to Dorothy. Or I can do what God would do and I could block. So I ended up taking my car and I, I blocked those guys and acted like I was trying to get a cake. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. And they're like, oh, hey, man. And they were trying to get by. And I almost threw the cake at them because I was just trying to, whatever it took. And then I looked back over and sweet little Dorothy, if that's her name, she grabbed the rose history chicken and she looked at me kind of funny. And I was like, and she was like, what? And I was like, nothing, nothing. It's fine. She didn't know what happened, but she had somebody fighting for her. There's somebody else was trying to, and maybe you were the guys trying to get to rotisserie chicken. I'll buy you one. I'm sorry. That was maybe you. Maybe I blocked that. Come on, lift your hands towards heaven. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. The blessing, all good things, the gifts from God, everything we've been talking about today comes from one place and his name is Jesus. Today, God, I pray that you, re that you would remove any obstacle, any distraction, anything, God, that's trying to block the blessing in our life. Any, God, any lack of perspective, I pray today, God, that you would realign. Any lack of faith, God, that you would reignite. Any lack of connectedness, God, I pray today that they would readjust and get connected, God, in a group, in relationships here at Hope City. Go through growth track, get on the dream team, be a part of what God's doing. God, a lack of peace. If there's restlessness in their life, God, I pray for peace. And God, today, I thank you for the power of your spirit that we can all lean in and be who we're called to be, the authentic us. If there's a lack of transparency in our life right now, would you shift your posture from here to here and do open-handed here, Cinco Woodlands, watching online, open-handed and just ask him as a daughter, as a son, God, remove anything in my life that's not all of you. If I'm getting in the way, remove it. If I'm not being transparent, remove it. If I'm not being authentic, remove it. If I'm doing something to muddy the waters of you blessing me so that I can bless others, Heal it, fix it, restore it. Just have a conversation real quick with the Lord, just you and him. You can whisper it. You don't have to say it out loud. You're like, remove Stephen from my life. Just, you don't have to yell it out. You don't have to say it out loud. But just ask the Lord right now. Just say, Lord, just remove whatever. Whatever the situation is, heal it, restore it, fix it. In Jesus' name. Come on, can somebody give God praise because he's good. All right, with every eye closed, just for a moment. Jesus is the way. I said this a moment ago. If you're here and by the sound of my voice, you're like, Daniel, here's the truth. I don't know Jesus as my Savior. Or maybe you're here and you say, I used to walk with Jesus, but the truth is I've gotten in the way. I have been blocking access and blocking the blessing because I've fallen away and I need to rededicate my life today. Today's my day. I got caught up in the prodigal life, but I want to rededicate my life today. If you're here, I'm going to count to three. And if that's you and you say, Daniel, today, I want to surrender my life to Jesus for the first time. One, I want to rededicate my life to him today. Two, I want to walk in the fullness of joy and the blessing he has for me. I truly want to know him. I truly want to find freedom. I truly want to discover my purpose so that I can be who I'm called to be. 
three, if that's you, would you lift up your hand right now? I'm looking hand, 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 hand. Just leave it up, leave it up, leave it up. Hand, hand, hand. A whole bunch of hands there, all the way in the back. Just leave it up for a minute. I see you in the back. I see you, I see you, I see you. I see you over here, buddy. I see you, my friend. I see you. You can put your hands down. Would you all pray this prayer with us today? Say, Jesus, it's me. I've been living for me, and it's not working. From today on, I choose to live for you. You are my Father, you are my Savior, and you are my Lord. I repent for all my sins and all my struggles. From today on, I choose to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, can we give God praise? Come on, here at West Houston, at Cinco, at the Woodlands online. Let's go.